And our thanks to our public address announcer, Jim Wagner, who has done an outstanding job all week long as we get set for this title contest. The Bears are in their traveling black uniforms, trimmed in gold and in white. It says Mott across the front in gold lettering with white trim. The numerals on the front and the back are of the same. Cuyahoga is in their home white uniforms. It says Cuyahoga across the front in block lettering. It is trimmed in blue. The lettering and the numerals on the front and back are in blue. We are set. The players are set. The ball is in the air, and the national championship is underway. And Mott is going to control the basketball. Flint will bring it across the midcourt stripe to the left-hand side, Allen. Allen out beyond the perimeter, works it down low, just to the outside with the baseline drive. Cole lost the handle on the ball, but it was last touched by Cuyahoga as Melton got a finger on it. It'll come back to the Bears underneath their own den. Allen slaps the ball to put the offense into motion. It comes to the left-hand side, and now up top, Youngblood. Youngblood eyes the three. He's not going to take it. He'll will drive into the lane, and he lost the handle on the ball this time, and nobody from Cuyahoga touches it, and the turnover, the first by Mott, gives the ball to the challengers for their first offensive possession. In the backcourt, the inbound will come to Robinson. Robinson will give it up to Duncan. Duncan will orchestrate the offense. From our right to our left, heading towards the west end of the Mary Miller Complex on the campus of Dan Valeria Community College. In the lane, he lost the handle on the ball, stolen away by Brown. Up the floor he comes. In the middle, he'll feed, down low to the left-hand side, and back up top it comes. Allen with the Mott basketball, kicks to the left-hand corner. Flint from three, good! They're going to say he stepped on the line and only giving credit for two. But the seal on the lid has been lifted. Well, they moved the ball for a nice open shot. 19 minutes left to go here in the first half. Cuyahoga with the ball. They feed in the middle. Robinson to Harris. It's batted away. Robinson comes up with it. Spins into the lane. Lost the handle, and Flint has the ball for Mott. Across the midcourt stripe. To the right-hand side, Youngblood. Youngblood with a bounce. He throws it high off the window and gets it to go. His first two points of the ball game, and it's a quick 4-0 run for the Bears. In the backcourt, Duncan. Works it across the state of Illinois emblem in mid-floor. To the left-hand side, Urbanski. Urbanski will now orchestrate the offense to the middle of the floor. Back to the left-hand side, he dribbles. To the right on the bounce pass, they give to Melton. His jumper on the way, short. Rebound underneath by Janon Cole for Mott. On the outlet, gives to Flint, and Flint will push it into the forecourt. He'll take it into the lane, kicks it out to Cole, and we've got a whistle. It's going to be an official's timeout. And that's because of an injured player all oh the way boy. back in the crowd. That is Michael Melton, and I never Nobody saw him go saw down. It, right. that, was, that was a shock. Melton had blended in with the crowd over in the corner, and he is in pain. Injuries yeah, throughout hard. the week Absolutely. have been prevalent for Cuyahoga. In fact, Darrell Harris is playing tonight, even though he has a strain or sprain to the ankle. And now with Melton down in the corner, both head coach Mark Anderson as well as our trainer for the national tournament, Dr. Robert Bartosz, are down tending to him. They do get him up on his feet, but now they're going to ask for some players to come down and assist Melton off the floor. Oh, Fowler, that is not good news no, for Coach not, Anderson. Not, not in a championship game, right. He has been a critical part of the offense, Fowler. One of five starters oh, that have boy. all averaged in double figures for these challengers. Absolutely. And I was thinking, Scott, what a perfect matchup. The champions against the challengers. <laughs> Isn't that a, an odd combination? That it, of course, Mott is the champion, and challengers is a nickname for the Cuyahoga team from Cleveland. Bears will inbound. Allen will do it directly in front of our broadcast location here on the floor. They give to Flint. Flint has it knocked out of his hands by Urbanski, but right back to Flint. Flint with a quick no look to Cole. His 17-footer is good. Cole with the first two points for the night, and it's a 6-0 lead for Mott Community College. Urbanski across the midcourt strike to the right-hand side. On the drive into the lane. They tried to get it over into the right-hand corner. Robinson, it's knocked out of his hands and out of play. The Bears paw the last to have contact with it, and it'll come back to Cuyahoga underneath their own. With a bounce pass, they almost throw it away and now do. 
Urbanski was trying to lead Robinson over in the corner, and for the third time in the first two and a half minutes of this contest, they have thrown it away. 17-38 on a moving first half clock in this championship game. Mott with the ball and a six-point edge. Brown went up into the air, didn't have an open look, and so he tossed it off to Cole in the corner. It was knocked out of his hands by Smith. Smith came in in place of Melton. Mott will inbound over on the left-hand side of the forecourt, where it comes to the top of the key, Flint. Flint to Brown. Brown in between the circles. Looks to the left. Now fires off right-hand side to Allen. Allen out beyond the arc. Dribbles to the top of the key, into the paint. Bounce pass picked off. Up the floor comes Duncan. Duncan one-on-one. -on -one. Layup is no good. Rebound effort underneath, and a foul is going to be called as Smith tried to go back up with it. Two Mott turnovers. They couldn't connect on the layup, but they do pick up the foul and go to the line to shoot twice. The foul is on Jay Youngblood. That's his first. And the first against Steve Schmidt's ball club. Smith looking for the first Cuyahoga point. 17.09 here to play in the first. And the first one is up and good. He's got another one coming in his direction. By the way, we send along our get well wishes to Bob K, who's at home resting this evening. He's had a bout of being under the weather this week. And so uh, he is truly missed on our broadcast team, but we wish him a speedy recovery. Second free throw is no good, and the rebound by the challengers. They'll kick it out top. Urbanski with the ball to the right-hand side. Gives to Harris. Harris spinning, looking. Gives to Urbanski. Urbanski beyond the perimeter. Looking down low. Can't find anybody. Heavily guarded by Flint. Will instead get rid of it to Duncan. Duncan with a shot clock at 12. Out beyond the arc. Gets a pick by Smith. Beautifully picked up by Allen. Rolls to the top of the free throw line. And we've got a foul. Boy, Mott is really putting pressure. Great pressure on, on the perimeter. That foul is on Corey Brown. It's his first. Mott second. And with a fresh 35, they'll inbound to Duncan, and the three is good. They left him open. Michael Duncan with his first three-pointer of the ball game, his first three points of the contest. And Mott now leads by a bucket, six to four. Cole with the ball at the free throw line. Stops and gives it up top. Allen on the drive. Looks down low. Feeds in the corner to Brown. Brown on the leaner. Missed it too long on the rebound by Smith for Cuyahoga. He'll dish it off to Urbanski. To the left-hand side, Duncan. Duncan into the forecourt, gets to the coast to coaster, and he missed it off the front of the rim. And the ball belongs to Mott. 16-09 left to go here in the first half of this championship game. Down the floor. Into the forecourt. To the left-hand side, Flint. He'll work it between the circles. On the bounce pass, Allen. Allen's going to drive the lane with the reverse. Missed the shot and the rebound by Duncan. Duncan to Urbanski. Urbanski. Working face-to-face -face against Flint. Throws it in the middle, Harris. Harris, not many touches so far. Fowler will give to Urbanski to shoot the oh, three, oh, and it's oh. the first Cuyahoga lead. Boy, that came from way out. That was not a normal three-pointer. Mott jumped out to a 6-0 run since that time. It has been a 7-0 run for Cuyahoga, and they lead by one. 15-25 to play here in the first half. In the corner, a three ball in the air on the counter. It won't go for Allen. Battle for the board underneath, and Urbanski finally clears. To the right-hand side for Cuyahoga. He'll push into the forecourt. Up beyond the arc, he'll get kickoff to the left-hand side. Duncan, beautiful no look underneath to Smith for the layup. Smith with his third point of the game, and Mott CC wants a timeout. 15.09 to play here in this first half. A 9-0 run for Cuyahoga, and it's a three-point lead for the challengers. Stunning turn of a turnaround there after they missed the first two shots. They've hit three of their last four, including a couple of trays. Toss in that free throw, and that's made the difference. Mott started out, hit their first three shots. Now they missed three, so. This is a strange game sometimes, Scott. You lose a starter and one of your five guys in double figures, he's out of there and they didn't miss a beat so far. Well, and you know, Smith is a six man all year for Cuyahoga. Right. And I have been impressed with him this week. 
when he has come in for limited action, he has been productive. Yeah, he's been a good rebounder. He hasn't been a big scorer, but he's a rebounder. Mott with the ball after the Steve Schmidt timeout. They'll juice up a three, and it won't go, and the rebound by Urbanski for Cuyahoga. They'll push across the center court circle to the top of the key. Robinson on the drive into the paint, throws up the one-hander. It won't go. Battle for the rebound. Robinson gets it back. Put up, won't go. This time the rebound belongs to Carlos English for Mott. He'll cush up the floor, gives it underneath. On the reverse, and the layup is good, courtesy of Andre Britton, and he's got his first two. 9-8. Cuyahoga up by one. Out to the right-hand side. Urbanski with the ball. Gets it across the green stripe at mid-floor and now dribbles to the right-hand free throw line extension. Will dish into the attic, Duncan. Duncan, back between the circles, rolls to the left-hand side. Looks down low, spins inside, throws it up, and it is no good, but he's fouled, and he'll step to the line. The foul is going to be on Jason Sadler. That is going to be his first, Mott's third. Duncan at the line now has a chance, Fowler, to put his team back up by three. First one on the way is up, and it is good. Duncan with his fourth point. Three points for Smith and three points for Urbanski. Good crowd on hand here tonight for a championship game, Fowler. Absolutely. Second one on the way is good, and Duncan with five points. Challengers are showing their medal at the free throw line. That's a good sign. And they lead by three. English out to the left-hand side. With the give in the middle, young blood. he'll shoot the three. Missed it off the back of the rim, and the rebound by Cuyahoga. Urbanski down the left-hand side of the forecourt. Out beyond the arc. Dribbles up in between the circles. And now, with the slow bounce to the left, finally feeds it off to Duncan. Duncan. Trying to get it underneath to Harris, and Harris is being shoved all over in the paint. Duncan will instead drive. Missed it off the back of the iron. Rebound fought for, picked up by Smith. Quick feed inside Harris, and he's going to be called for the travel. Mark Anderson knew it too, Fowler, because as soon as the whistle blew, he yelled, don't call me for the travel. <laughs> and indeed, that was the whistle. Yeah, they missed a good opportunity to score then after they got that rebound on the on the weak side. That looked like they're going to get a putback, but... Travel intervened. 13-25 left to go here in the first half. 11-8 the lead by Cuyahoga, but four turnovers here early in the contest. English with the basketball for Mott. Gives to the right-hand side Allen. Allen out beyond the perimeter. Dribbles once and gives to English. English, top of the key. He's got a lane open. He's going to drive. Missed it, but a foul on Harris. We'll send him to the line. That'll be the first on Darrell Harris. The first against Cuyahoga. Well, there's a lot of jostling for positions on these teams when they get in the paint there. It's a tough game to officiate. That's why they've got three of the best. Absolutely. First free throw by English is good. Flint with two, Youngblood with two, Britton with two, Cole with two. English is hoping at the conclusion of this free throw, he also will have two. He missed it. Off the back of the rim, and the rebound by Sadler. Mott's going to maintain control of the ball. Off to the right-hand side, they give to Allen from three. Missed it. Battle for the board. Britton comes up with it. On the baseline drive, his shot is blocked, and he's going to be fouled. The foul is on Duran Robinson, and that is going to be his first, the team's second. And that sends Britton to the line. He's trying to add to his two points, and he's hoping to tie it. 12.57 left to play. Cuyahoga with a two-point lead. I should say that's the play here in the first half. And the first free throw is good by Britton. Britton played eight minutes in the semifinal game, didn't score, but he did come up with three rebounds. Second one is off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound by Mott, the putback, no good by Crawford. He had it blocked by Robinson, and Robinson comes away with the ball. Urbanski will slowly bring it across the midcourt strike to the right-hand side. Looks to the left, dribbles to the right, gives to the right-hand side. Duncan, Duncan looking down low, can't find anybody. Dribbles towards the baseline. 
on the baseline he'll give. Robinson fights for some room. Dropped it off the bottom of the backboard. Picks up his own rebound. Gets the layup and he's going to be fouled. The foul is going to be on Sadler. That'll be his second. The team's fourth. Count the bucket by Robinson. His first two points of the game. And he'll go to the line for an old-fashioned three-point play. And now Youngblood will check into the lineup. Field will check into the lineup. Robinson with a Cuyahoga three-point lead, looking to make the free throw to give them their biggest advantage of the night. He eyes it, flies it, missed it off the back of the rim. Battle for the rebound, goes out of play. Model get it back. Cuyahoga's taking advantage of their size inside. They hold an 11-5 rebound advantage, and that is a big statistic in this game. English off to the left-hand side. On the cross court to Youngblood. Youngblood's got an opening in the lane. He oh, throws it up left-handed, missed it. It's knocked out of play, and it belongs to Cuyahoga. <laughs> what a move he made, though. He faked himself out on that move, I think. 12-13 left to play here in this first half. 13-10, the lead Cuyahoga. Out to the right-hand side. They've got the basketball as well. In control of it is Duncan. Duncan, toe-to-toe -to -toe with Allen, drives him to the right-hand side. Now Britain's going to pick him up. They leave Harrison open. Almost picked off by Youngblood with the pickpocket. And instead, it goes out of play. It'll come back to the challengers underneath their own stars. With the inbound all the way up top, Duncan. Duncan on the lob down low, over the head of the intended receiver, Harrison, out of play. Turnover number five by the white-clad Cuyahoga challengers. Mott, open until they cross the midcourt stripe. Do so with English. English, underneath Britain. He stops from 11 feet, pops and scores. Terrific, terrific pass by Urbanski. Allen with his first two points. 13-12, the Cuyahoga lead. 11.30 left to play here in the first half. Urbanski gets a beautiful pick, rolls to the left-hand side. Looking to bring it Roll up top, does pass. so in the middle of the floor. Robinson fighting for the ball. Turns, shoots, blocked from behind, and the rebound by Mott. Britton comes up with the ball. Feeds it in the middle to English. English will work it into the paint. On the stroll, he throws it away to Duncan. Duncan will head in the other direction from our right to our left. Up the floor he comes. Stops, shoots, up the window he gets it to go. Courtesy of the third turnover by Mott. Duncan now with seven. 15 to 12. Cuyahoga with the lead. Mott with the basketball. Down low, Youngblood is going to drive oh. the baseline. Wide open for the dunk, and he's got four. That enlightens the crowd a little bit, especially those in black and gold. 15-14. Cuyahoga's one-point lead. Off to the right side. They try to get it underneath to Robinson. Batted away by English, but Urbanski comes back up with it. Urbanski beyond the perimeter. Still looking down inside. Still trying to get it to Robinson. Now does. Robinson into the lane. Bounce pass underneath. Smith layup. Good. And he's going to be fouled. Smith has come up big over and over in this first 10 minutes of play, Fowler. Absolutely. He's done a great job coming off the bench. Richard Field with his first, Mott with their fifth team foul. Smith at the line for an old fashioned three. Smith toes it up, looking for point number six. And he missed it. Barely hit anything, goes out of play, and the ball will belong to Mott. Checking into the lineup now for Cuyahoga will be Clinton Tucker. Tucker seeing his first action of the night. Brown, Flint, Youngblood, Field, and in the middle, Janon Cole. That's who's on the floor for the black and gold Bears. Flint on the lob down low, Cole. Cole will shoot the 18-footer. It's partially blocked in the rebound by Robinson for Cuyahoga. Harris got a finger on the basketball, enough to keep it short. And Robinson was able to return to Urbanski. They'll work it up the floor. To the right-hand side, on the drive, tosses it underneath. Harris all alone, and he gets the layup. 
Harris with his first two. 19-14, a five-point lead. They bring it. Off to the left side, Cole on the baseline drive, blocked from behind, picks up his own rebound, missed it, tipped by Flynn, won't go, and this time the board by Robinson for Cuyahoga. He delivers to Urbanski, Urbanski into the forecourt. Beyond the top of the key, he slows and gives to Robinson, and Robinson with a juke step travel. Six turnovers for Cuyahoga. Mott unable to capitalize on the last one, however, Fowler. That's true. Mott's had trouble rebounding. Off to the right-hand side. Flint in control of the ball. Feeds. And that's a travel as well. This one against Corey Brown. The Bears' fourth turnover. 19-14. The five-point lead belongs to Cuyahoga with 9.08 left to play here in the first half. Duncan inbounds into the back quarter. Bansky coming up at halftime. Fowler, some lucky winner is going to pick up over $2,200 in cash. Out to the right side, a jumper on the way. Good by Tucker. And Tucker's got his first two points of the game. And Steve Schmidt wants a timeout. His team down by seven, 21 to 14. It's a full, we'll take it with 8.50 left to go here in the first half. You're enjoying the NJCAA Division II Men's Basketball National Tournament Radio Network. out of the timeout. Mott with the basketball. They trail. 8.35 left to go here in the first half. Youngblood gets the ball on the baseline, drives, shoots. He's fouled by Harris. And that'll be the second on Harris, the third against Cuyahoga. Youngblood will go to the line. Fowler, I would assume in that timeout, Steve Schmidt talked to his team a little bit about driving the baseline and working the ball inside the paint. Yeah, that's true, and he got to get a rebound a little better. They've uh, been back on their heels a little bit in this game. The challenges are playing extremely well, even though they're missing one of their units in, on the team, the guy that was part of their five-man balanced attack. Michael Melton went down earlier with an injury. He has not returned. Second free throw on the way is no good. A battle for the board, and coming out of the pile with it is Tucker. Cuyahoga with control. Gives to Urbanski. Urbanski is going to push it across the state of Illinois emblem in mid-floor. 21-15, a six-point Cuyahoga lead. Off to the left-hand side, Urbanski with a bounce pass down low. Duncan, he's going to drive, shoot, scores! Duncan with nine. Across the floor, Brown with a give underneath. Cole turns and traveled. What's interesting, Fowler, is that Steve Schmidt called Mark Anderson at the beginning of the year to try to schedule a game with Cuyahoga (laughs) as the season opener. Cuyahoga, who opened the year with five road games, decided against it. And as Coach Anderson pointed out, they could have played the first game of the year and the last game of the year. Here's a give underneath. Duncan, layup, good, and he's got 11. Scored on seven of their last eight possessions. That is remarkable. A double-digit lead for Cuyahoga, 25-15. 7.30 left to go here in the first half, and a foul is going to be whistled. The foul is going to be on Clinton Tucker. That'll be his first, the team's fourth. 
Underneath, Terrell Allen's going to come into the lineup. He's going to inbound the basketball underneath the Bears' den. It comes to the left-hand side where they give to Flint. Flint on the baseline. Had it knocked out of his hands and out of play. It'll come back to the Bears under their own. Allen will again slap the ball to put the offense in motion. He looks to the right-hand side and comes all the way up top to Flint. Flint, face-to-face -face with Urbanski, drives him to the paint. Stops, now feeds off left-hand side. With the drive, Crawford gives to Britton. Britton, back out top, Youngblood. Youngblood, looking, almost traveled, drives into the lane, one-hander oh, off the beautiful. glass and good, and he's got seven. Beautiful move, that broke, us, broke the spell for Mott. Duncan in the backcourt. Off to the right-hand side, he's being heavily pressured by Allen. Gets it across the green stripe at midcourt, to the left-hand side. Now to Urbanski, who will run the offense from there. Urbanski rolls right to the left, throws up a three ball. It is well off the mark and out of play. It'll come to Mott. Was that a three-point attempt or an <laughs> alley-oop without the like, oop? I think you'd like to say it was an alley-oop if it wasn't because it certainly was an off-target shot. 25-17, eight-point lead for Cuyahoga. Mott with the ball. Allen on the baseline. Stops outside of the paint. Bounces down low to Youngblood. Youngblood. Looking for some room, and now will drive to the free throw line. Pulls up, shoots, missed it off the side of the rim. Rebound underneath, fought for by Britton, picked up inside by Mott. They'll kick it out. Three ball by Allen, missed it off the side of the rim. Loose ball on the floor, and Cuyahoga will come out of the pile. Tucker with the ball. He stops and waits for everybody to clear. Now on the cross court, gives to Urbanski. Urbanski. In the middle to Robinson. Robinson backdoor, Duncan blocked from behind. Smith rebound, put back, good. Beautiful. They've just been killing him inside, just literally killing him inside. Seven points for Smith to the right-hand side. Flint with the Mott basketball. Down low on the baseline, Youngblood. They give to Britton. The 17-footer is off the mark, and the rebound on the floor by Urbanski. Urbanski to the right-hand side, pushes it up the floor, and is going to be tripped from behind by Flint. That'll be his first personal. The sixth against Mott. Five thirty-nine to play here in this first half of basketball. A ten-point Cuyahoga lead. Out to the right-hand side, Duncan with a bounce pass down low gives to Robinson. The one-handed reverse is good. Robinson with his fourth point in the contest. Twenty-nine seventeen Cuyahoga lead. To the right-hand side, Young Blood. Young Blood on the lob down low to Britton. Britton stops, shoots, and travel. Corey Brown's going to come into the lineup. Janon Cole is going to come into the lineup on the sixth turnover by Mott. Well, Scott, I think we've all kind of underestimated Cuyahoga's defensive prowess. In those earlier games, they didn't win by big scores, and, and we looked at Mott being the champion, and after that terrific victory over Kirkwood, the team that we figured would be the one that would ch most seriously challenge Mott. Turns out that Cuyahoga has been underestimated by most of the folks here. Well, and I'll tell you another thing, Fowler. What is tough to stop about the challengers is their equally balanced scoring attack. That's true. You're getting points from everybody. You take Melton out of the mix because of the injury, and Lamaro Smith comes in. He's got seven points and has been an absolute rebounding force underneath. Yeah, they have, they've worked the ball so well for inside. They've just destroyed Mott's inner defense. I mean, it's just unbelievable how they've controlled it. They have a 17-8 to 8 rebounding advantage. So when they miss a shot, they stick it back in. Now on the other end, they're picking off all the, all the caroms as well. Out on the right-hand side, Duncan with the ball on the cross-court feed to Urbanski from three, and it's good! <laughs> that ball could have been his hand a split second. Urbanski with his sixth point, 32-17, the lead by Cuyahoga. Mott with the ball, 4.50 left to play in the first half. On the drive, Sadler throws it up and scores. He's got his first two points. Now in the backcourt, Mott applying full-court pressure. Duncan is going to be picked up by Brown. Duncan forced off to the left-hand side. 
Now rolls to the right with a basketball. Top of the key. His defender falls down. That gives him an opening, oh, and he gets oh, the layup. Oh, oh, my goodness. All he needed was for the defender to fall. Brown did just that. He snuck around him and threw it up off the window. On the drive, Sadler with the ball, feeds underneath. Cole missed the shot, gets his own rebound, fights for it. He's going to be fouled on the second effort, and he'll go to the line. Scott, unofficially, I've got the shooting stats, 14 of 24 for Cuyahoga. That is incredible shooting against a team that prides itself on its defense. 15-point lead for the challengers of Cuyahoga. 4-10 left to go in the first half. Cole at the line. Looking for point number three. It is up and it is no good. English with one, Flint with two, Sadler with two, Allen with two, Youngblood with seven, Britton with three. Cole's next free throw. This one's up and it is no good. Rebound, knocked out of play and we've got a whistle. That foul is gonna be on Jay Youngblood. It is his second. And Mott seventh, and we'll walk down to the other end and shoot a one and one. Boy, this is one of those games where you wonder what happened to plan A. We better get B and C in operation. Nothing's going right for Mott. I mean, this is incredible. They've got 19 points in roughly 16 minutes. That's un unreal. First free throw is good by Harris. He's got three. And the second one now. Harris trying to add to the Cuyahoga lead. They could go up by 17, and they do. And Harris only has four of those points, Fowler. Mott with the ball, English in between the circles, looks to the left-hand side, gives the ball off to Brown, Brown, back to English on the right-hand side. He'll shoot a three. Missed it off the side of the rim, and the rebound by Duncan. Duncan will give it to Urbanski, and Cuyahoga will have the ball. 3.45 left to go in the first half of this championship game. A 17-point Cuyahoga lead. They give to Duncan. Duncan out beyond the perimeter. Dribbles down low on the baseline, pulls up, shoots, missed it, and a loose ball on the floor. Duncan able to pick it up to the right-hand side. Gives to Harris. He's going to be fouled. You want to know why the challengers have the lead they do, Fowler? It's because of their all-out effort, a missed opportunity right. underneath. They go sprinting after the rebounding, come up with it, and now they go to the line for a chance to put two more points on the board. Just been a remarkable first half. Remarkable. The foul is on Janon Cole. That is his first, the team's eighth. At the line, Harris knocked down the first one. Second one on the way. Good as well. He's got six. And it's a 19-point lead for Cuyahoga. They have doubled the score on the Bears. Down low into the right-hand corner. Brown shoots the three, missed it off the front of the rim and the rebound by Robinson. Robinson out to the right-hand side, Urbanski. Urbanski across the state of Illinois emblem. Now gets to the left-hand side, Duncan. Duncan gets a pick, but he won't take it. Instead, he's going to reset the offense. 2.55 to play here in the first half. Duncan off to the right-hand side, drives the baseline, lost the handle on the ball, picks it back up, drives again, and this time he traveled. Turnover number seven against the challengers. And Schmidt is going to bring back into the lineup Tim Flint and Terrell Allen. 2.47 to go in the first half. 38-19. Cuyahoga with the lead. Well, now Corey Brown has figured out he's one of the players being replaced. <laughs> He was going to inbound. <laughs> they finally clear the floor of the additional Mott player. And they'll bring it up the floor. Flint to the right-hand side. Sadler. Sadler out beyond the arc. Gives it up top, Allen, to the left-hand side. Flint in the middle, Sadler. Sadler. 
to the free throw line. Stops, looks around, gives to Allen. Allen's going to take the baseline. Throws it up, has it blocked, and he traveled. <laughs> Seven Mott turnovers in this first half. Mott has made one of its last 12 shots. Two of its last 12 shots. Urbanski into the forecourt. On the bounce pass, gives it down low, Robinson. Robinson fights his way in, and he traveled. Number eight. Everybody looking for that extra step, and unfortunately, they're getting called for taking them. Mott is 7 of 27 from the field. Incredible. Across mid-floor, to the right-hand side, Flint. Gives the Mott basketball in the middle to Youngblood. Youngblood on the drive, throws it up. It's no good. Rebound underneath, picked up by Sadler. He fakes, he shoots, he's fouled. The foul is going to be on Robinson, and that is his third fouler, the sixth against the Challengers. Well, the Challengers' superior height and rebounding ability has been a big difference in this game, and Mott is unable to hit from the outside and inside. They've found a barrier there. They just can't get over the barrier. At the line, Sadler, the first one is up and no good. Oh, good. They can't even hit free throws right now, Fowler. They're three of nine. Three of nine on free throws. Uh, Meanwhile, Cuyahoga has done everything right. You're absolutely correct in that assessment. Second free throw is no good because Youngblood went there, into the lane early. There you go. There's another situation. 38-19. Cuyahoga with the lead underneath the two-minute warning of the first half. Duncan on the inbound. Gives to Urbanski. Urbanski up the floor. Two on two. And there's a blocking call underneath. Well, now he whistled blocking. And that is what they're going to call. It's going to be on Britain. It's one of those games of Murphy's Law. If anything goes right, you're surprised. Everything turns wrong for him. Well, I got. Work it into the forecourt. Brown with a basketball. Gives to Flint. Flint dribbles off to the left-hand side. On the baseline, they'll kick it upstairs. Youngblood. Youngblood in the middle. Gives to Brown. Brown to the left side. Flint. Flint down low. Works it to Youngblood. Youngblood on the baseline drive. Blocked away by Harris. Robinson fighting for the ball, and we've got a foul. And that foul is going to be on Flint. It'll be his second, the team's first. Let's take a look at some of our first half statistics. Fowler Cannell's got a look at those. Fowler. I had Mott, Mott only 9 of 32 from the field, 0 for 7 beyond the arc, 3 for 10 on free throws, while Cuyahoga was unreal, 14 of 26 from the field, 3 of 5 beyond the arc, 9 of 12 on free throws. I had Cuyahoga with a 22-11 rebound advantage. They had 9 turnovers to 7 for Mott. So dominating the boards and dominating the shootings is the reason for the big lead. Terrell Allen picked up a foul. He's got his first. It's the team's second. Out beyond the right-hand side, Urbanski with the ball, pulls up at the free throw line, missed the shot, and the rebound is going to be scooped up by the Bears. They'll feed down the right-hand side and throw it away. <laughs> oh, goodness. By the way, congratulations. Goes out to our winner of $2,300. It is a Danville, it, Illinois it, man. It wasn't me. It was not you, Fowler. It wasn't the mayor. It wasn't me either. Nor the vice mayor. Not indeed. It was Fred Danner. Fred Danner, the winner of $2,300. Inside, Robinson on the drive, gets the layup, and he's got his sixth point of the ball game. 42-21, a 21-point lead for Cuyahoga. 18-20 to go in the championship. Out beyond the right-hand side. They bounce pass it into Youngblood. Youngblood upstairs to Brown. Brown to the left-hand side. Flint over into the corner to Allen, and the three is good. Terrell Allen with his fifth point of the ball game. The first three they've hit. 42-24. Cuyahoga with the lead in the basketball out to the left-hand side. 
They'll dribble to the right side. Urbanski in the middle to Duncan. He lost the handle on the ball. He's going after it. He picks it back up. Now he'll dribble to the free throw line. Stops, pops, block from behind. Robinson, rebound, put back, good. Robinson with four first half points. He's got four more second half points. And that comes with just a minute and a half played. On the drive, in the lane, Cole missed the shot. Rebound, tapped to him, but he was standing out of bounds when it got to him. And the ball will come back to Cuyahoga Community College. Quick whistle underneath, an official's timeout. And now they'll work it up the floor. Cuyahoga up by 20. Gives the ball off to the left-hand side. They work in the middle. Robinson out to the right-hand side. Urbanski. Urbanski to the top of the key. Looks to the right. Rolls to the left. Dumps to Duncan and Duncan. Upstairs to Harris. Harris will give to Smith. Smith stops, feeds to Duncan. Duncan dribbles off to the right-hand side. He's going to look down low, stops on the baseline, blocked underneath. The shot clock runs out, and Mott has the ball in their hands regardless. Up the floor they come. Three ball in the air by Allen. Good! Allen with his eighth point of the contest. Well, they're heating up a little bit, but, boy, that's a lot to dig dig out of a hole that deep. 44-27, the lead by Cuyahoga. Out to the right-hand side, Duncan. Duncan in the middle of the floor to Harris. What you will notice, Fowler, is Cuyahoga will use as much time on the clock as they possibly can with each possession. Urbanski trying to get to the baseline, cut off beautifully by Flint. Rolls into the paint, has the ball knocked out of his hands. It comes back to Urbanski. His shot is blocked. Picking up the basketball is going to be Corey Brown on the feed, up the floor. They get it to Youngblood, and the layup is good. Young Blood with nine, 44-29, the lead by Cuyahoga. Yeah, they've still got to attack. They can't be too cautious, but they've, uh, leads can disappear in a hurry in basketball, but wow, that was close. Duncan almost lost the handle on it out of play. It comes in the middle to Harris, and the jumper is good. That'll slow down the Bears. Yeah, absolutely. A nice touch from the outside. Eight points for Harris, 46-29. The 17-point lead by Cuyahoga. Here's a three by Allen. It's no good. The tip by Cole is no good. And the rebound by Cuyahoga. Duncan underneath, and we've got a whistle. And a young lady darted out of the bleachers and onto the floor. <laughs> Tell you what, these officials have been quick tonight. Yes, the entry earlier, they were the only three that saw it. Absolutely. And now a youngster runs out onto the floor and they stop play. Urbanski will now bring it up the floor. Into the forecourt in a hurry. He's going to be double teamed. He breaks out of traffic. Comes up top near the stripe at mid floor. Now on the drive. Hands it off underneath. Harris uh, off the window and he gets it to go. He's got 10. Uh, you were impressed with Mr. Urbanski the other day and I can see why. He Doesn't, has been my favorite small man of the tournament. He does a lot of wonderful things. Up top and around the perimeter to Brown from three. He missed it. The rebound up top. It's going to be scooped up by Brown. Brown will try another three. This time from the opposite side. It won't go. Tip won't go. And we've got a foul. That foul is going to be on Harris. It'll be his third and the team's first. There have only been seven fouls on Cuyahoga called here in this contest. Three on Harris and three on Robinson. If I'm Steve Schmidt, I make a note of that and start driving in on them. Well, they've been trying that, but they haven't had much success. Here's there one, and Youngblood gets the layup. He's got 11. They tried that the first half, and they couldn't, couldn't rebound. 48-31. Cuyahoga with the lead. 14-25 left to go in the championship game. Urbanski upstairs. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with English. Stops, they lob down low. Robinson, baseline, leaner, blocked. Gets his own rebound. Second shot won't go. Loose ball on the floor. It goes out of play and belongs to Mott. Mott's much more aggressive inside than they were that first half, but they're still down 17. Up the floor. No full court pressure. 
English brings it across the yellow dot at midcourt. Down low on the baseline to Youngblood. He leans, he shoots, he scores! Youngblood with 13. 48-33. The one-time 21-point lead is now at 15. Urbanski to the left-hand side. Lost the handle on the ball. Trying to come up with it. He does. Feeds to Duncan. Duncan's going to drive to the right-hand side. A dump down low and a hand check is going to be whistled against Britain. That'll be his second and the team's third. 48-33, Cuyahoga with the lead. And they've got the basketball underneath their own. Inbound to Harris, the shot by Urbanski is blocked. Harris rebound, put back, good. Harris with 12, 50-33. Out to the right-hand side and around the perimeter. Sadler with the bounce pass inside. Youngblood off the glass and good. Boy, does he make things happen. He's got 15. 50 to 35, Cuyahoga lead. They've got the basketball as well. 13, 13 left to go in the game. Urbanski, toe to toe with English, gets a beautiful pick by Smith. Rolls off to the left hand side. Smith all alone, layup, good. Great pass by Urbanski, found a man wide open. Great pass. English to the right hand side. Crawford from three, missed it, going after the rebound. Robinson picks it up. Feeds to Urbanski. Urbanski up the floor. He's going to stop and wait for some help. He's double teamed in the corner and calls timeout. It's a 30, 12 46 left to go here in this contest. That is the first TO by Cuyahoga. Scoring wise in this contest for the Bears, English with one, Flint with two, Sadler two, Crawford two, Allen two, Youngblood with 15. Britain with three and Cole with two. Cuyahoga has gotten eight out of Urbanski. Tucker with two, Duncan with 13, Smith with nine, Harris with 12, and Robinson with eight. They could still end up with five players in double figures tonight, Fowler. Isn't that amazing? Simply replacing Smith for Melton, who went out with an injury earlier. I'm, rarely do you ever see a team with that kind of balance. Off the inbound, they'll feed it to Urbanski. Urbanski all the way upstairs, gets to the left-hand side. Duncan down underneath to Robinson, and he lost the handle on the ball, and out of play it goes. 52-35, Mutt with the basketball. They trail, but they have it courtesy of the third Cuyahoga turnover. English to the left-hand side. Feeds in the middle. Britain back out to the left-hand side, English. English in between the circles. Now dumps off right-hand side. Youngblood, Crawford, left-hand side, Sadler. Shot clock down to 10. Crawford with the ball. He's going to drive, spins, shoots, scores. Crawford with his fourth point of the ball game. They've scored in five of their last six shots. They shot a whopping 31% in the first half, <laughs> while Cuyahoga shot 51% from the field. Out to the right-hand side, Duncan is cut off. His shot is going to be blocked. Loose ball on the floor, Robinson. Lost it out of bounds, but it was touched by Crawford before, touching the wall, and it'll come back to Cuyahoga underneath their own. 11.45 to play. Cuyahoga with a 15-point lead. On the inbound, it comes all the way upstairs. Duncan gets the feed, delivers downstairs. That's to Harris. Harris with a dribble, turn, shoots, missed it. Rebound on the floor, scooped out of the field by Crawford, and he'll push it up the floor for Mott. Crawford drives into the lane, lost the ball, and it's going to be picked up by Urbanski. Urbanski for Cuyahoga will go in the opposite direction, and now he stops and slows things down once he gets to the top of the key. To the left-hand side, he drives into the lane, bounce pass, Robinson. Stops, fakes, was fouled by Britton. That is the third on Britton, the fourth against the Bears. 52-37, the lead by Cuyahoga. And Robinson at the line has an opportunity to expand it. First free throw on the way is no good. 
That was ugly. Robinson's free throw all week long, and I begged a DACC physics instructor to come out here and explain to me how a ball with so little arc, so little distance above the rim, still finds a way to get to the bottom. It is no good off the side of the rim and the rebound by Mott. Up the floor, Allen will push across the midcourt stripe. Into the paint he goes. Dishes off left-hand side, Brown. Up top it comes to Allen. Allen will take the pick, rolls to the right-hand side, gives to English. Upstairs, Allen. Back to English. Fakes the three and drives. Top of the key, Allen. Allen with a bounce pass. Dumps inside. Youngblood. Beautiful drive. Blocked from behind by Harris. What a block by Harris on what looked like an easy layup for Youngblood. Cuyahoga with the basketball. 10-41 left to play. Out to the left-hand side. The shot by Urbanski is blocked into the drums by English, and it'll come back to Cuyahoga over on the left-hand side of the forecourt. Well, that's tough to do. He gets that shot off so quickly. With the inbound, it comes to Urbanski. <clears throat> Urbanski in between the circles. Rolls off to the right. Looking down low. He can't find anybody. Now does Duncan. Duncan out beyond the arc. Takes it to the paint. Drops inside Harris. Harris had the ball stripped out of his hands by Youngblood and out of play. Well, the Bears have picked up their intensity here in the second half. There's no question about that. But a huge lead by Cuyahoga at the break. Here's a shot. It is no good. The shot clock ran out, and the Bears will get the ball back. 52-37, the one-time 21-point lead is down to 15 for Cuyahoga. 10-11 left to go in the championship game. Mott's cut down on their turnovers considerably, too. Upstairs, Youngblood to Allen, to English, to Youngblood. Youngblood in the lane, off the glass and good. Oh, I don't know how he gets rid of some of those, let alone makes Yeah, okay, They're getting close to getting it under 10. If they do that, we might have a ball game. Urbanski across the yellow dot at mid-floor. To the left. Now the right. Drives into the lane. Swatted away. Picked up underneath by Robinson. Put back good. Robinson with 10. Now three challengers are in double figures. 54-39 their lead, and the Bears throw it away. What did I say about turnovers? Number three. For Cuyahoga, Robinson with 10, Harris with 12, and Duncan with 13. Urbanski and Smith are only a bucket away from also reaching double figures. Across mid-floor to the left-hand side, Urbanski on the bounce pass, feeds to Duncan. Duncan dribbles up top in between the rounds, rolls to the right-hand side, now looks down. Can't find anybody, he'll reset the offense, this time to the left side. Trying to get a pick, can't find one. Quick dish underneath, Smith, layup, good! Smith with 11, and now four challengers are in double figures. Well, they're getting close to the five, aren't they? 56-39, the Cuyahoga lead, a three by Brown, and it is no good. It hit the back of the rim, hit the top of the backboard, and it is handed over to Cuyahoga. It has to be fun playing on that team, Scott, because everybody can pass the ball, and they're very unselfish. That's why you have so many guys in balance figures. Up the floor, Cuyahoga with the ball. Urbanski, quick no look underneath to Harris. Back out Urbanski. Urbanski, heavily guarded by Flynn. <laughs> He is the only one not yet in double figures. He needs a bucket to do it. Here's his drive. The shot no good. The rebound fought for, scooped up by Mott. On the drive up the floor. Allen with the basketball. He stops. He pops. He scores. Allen with 10 points. Mott wants a timeout. 8-22 left to go in the game. 56-41. Cuyahoga with the lead. You're enjoying the NJCAA Division II Men's Basketball National Tournament Radio Network.
8.22 left to go in this championship game. Cuyahoga with a 56-41 lead over the Bears of Mott Community College. Mott with a steal. Flint on the feed, up the floor. Allen layup, and he is fouled. Now we'll see whether or not they call an intentional. They're not going to, Fowler. Urbanski no. came down and grabbed the arm of Allen to keep him from going up to the lane. Urbanski with his first, the team's second. And Allen at the line, 56-41. The Bears trail, trying to cut into that 15-point deficit. This is their first chance at the free throw line this half. And they fail. Off the front of the rim, it won't roll. English with one, Flint with two, Sadler two, Crawford four, Allen 10, Youngblood 17, Britton with three, and Cole with two. Second free throw now on the way. It is good. 56-42 and full court pressure Fowler is being applied. And did they get the timeout? It appears as though they may have gotten the timeout. Or are they just going to say the ball was last touched by Mott? That's what they're going to yeah. say. The ball went out of bounds and it was last touched by Mott. Up the floor, Urbanski brings it into the forecourt. Three on one, the give to Duncan, and the layup is good. What a pass. What a pass by Urbanski. He's terrific. He doesn't have to score. He's terrific. Top of the key with the give. They work to Cole. The shot by Allen. The three is no good, and the rebound by Urbanski. Cuyahoga ball up the floor. They push to the left-hand side. Out beyond the perimeter. A quick dish underneath. Smith, layup good. Smith with 13, back to an 18-point lead for Cuyahoga. 7.28 left to go in this championship game. Here's a three by Allen. Ooh. Good! Allen with his 14. 60 to 45. In midcourt, the ball is stolen away by Brown. Brown has it knocked out of his hands from behind by Steve Jindra. And the Mott Bears will inbound it underneath their own den. Janon Cole is going to come back into the lineup. Yeah, nobody helped Urbanski out then. They got him from behind. None of his teammates told him to look out. Flint will inbound for Mott. Cole, Brown, Field. Also in the lineup for the Bears. Now Robinson will check back in for Smith. Allen, the fifth bear on the floor with the inbound. It comes to the left-hand side. Brown to Allen from three. Good! 17 points for Allen, and that fouler, under your theory, would have been a four-pointer. <laughs> That's right. They've hit two threes in a row, getting back in this thing a little bit. Out to the left-hand side. Cuyahoga with the basketball. Harris down near the baseline. He drives into the paint, feeds it upstairs. They work to Urbanski. Urbanski trying to find some room to the right. Will drive to the right. Quick pass underneath. Harris blocked away by Cole. Rebound by Mott. Brown out on the right-hand side. will bring it across the midcourt stripe. To the left-hand side. Allen from three. Missed it off the back of the rim. Cole tried to get the rebound. Instead, it was picked up by Harris. He tried to save it. And he bounces it off of the hands of Cole and out of play. And Cuyahoga is going to get it back. The Bears are within 12, 6.25 to go. Cuyahoga to inbound in the backcourt. Robinson, Duncan, Duncan's got the feed up the floor. Works it to Harris, and Harris on the baseline. Stops, gives in the middle. Jindra, and Jindra will pull out. Jindra on the bounce pass to Duncan. Picked up underneath. Jump ball, the call, and the possession arrow belongs to Mott. What a great defensive effort directly in front of us by Allen. Allen has exploded in this second half, Fowler. Well, he got the message that Bear came out of hibernation. Uh, they're, they're playing extremely well in the last three or four minutes, and uh, there's just been a lot of extra second efforts. Their shooting has just, just turned around completely. They've hit eight of their last 11 shots. 6-12 to play. Across the midcourt strike. Flint with the ball. 
He'll drive to the free throw line, kicks off in the corner. Allen is going to drive. He stops and he's fouled. No, they're going to call jump ball. Big break for the challengers. The possession arrow belongs to Cuyahoga. One official signaled one way and the other official signaled the other way and the man that called the tie up won. Cuyahoga with the ball, stolen away on the inbound. The ball is knocked out of play by Robinson and Mott's going to get it back. They're getting a little careless here, Scott. A little careless. <laughs> Big Shockey sitting behind us. Boy, what a great tournament he's put together once again this year. Absolutely. Co-chairing with Randy Fletcher. You know who's sitting next to him too, don't you? Oh, Mike Colby. Here's the inbound. Youngblood layup. Good. 19 points for Youngblood. Down to 10. A 10-point ball game. 5.53 left to go. Urbanski down the right-hand side of the backcourt. Flint cuts him off. He'll go to the left. Working it to the left-hand side. Urbanski's going to drive to the free throw line. Stops. Looks around. Kicks it off to Duncan. They're pushing him all over the place. And we've got a timeout by Mark Anderson. He wants a full. 5.36 left to go in this championship game. Cuyahoga with a 60-50 lead over Mott. You're enjoying the NJCAA Division II Men's Basketball National Tournament Radio Network. Mark Anderson took the timeout, Fowler Cannell, mainly because they were having trouble getting rid of the basketball. He wants to reset the strategy for the final five and a half minutes of this championship affair. Duncan will inbound the ball, and he's going to take another timeout. Yeah, back to back left. TOs. He's going to use a 30 here, Fowler, so we'll keep it here. They got three left. Mott has two left. Yeah, the Mott has really come to life with their, their defense. Uh, the rebounding isn't spectacular, but they've hit uh, hit some of those, th they've hit four three-pointers this half after going 0 for 7 beyond the arc in the first half. Well, the difference, Fowler, is not necessarily what they've done in the shooting or it's rebounding. The aggressiveness. The intensity. Aggressiveness. That's what has been so and, different in this second half. And the officials are letting them play. There's been a lot of uh, crowd people. They're not calling a lot of those, so you got to adjust. And as you mentioned, Mott had to adjust the way it was called the first half. Now, I think the same Holds true for Cuyahoga. 60-50, a 10-point Cuyahoga lead. 5.35 left to go here in the championship. The inbound will come to Robinson. Robinson to Duncan. Urbanski is sitting out. Duncan on the drive in the paint, lost the handle. It was fouled. So that will give Urbanski a chance to get back into the contest. Corey Brown picks up his second foul. It is the Mott Bears' fifth team foul. And at the line, Duncan. Duncan trying to add to his 15 points. The first one is up, and it is good. Duncan with 16. 61-50. You look at Urbanski's uniform, Fowler, and there's blood all over it. <laughs> that shows you what kind of game it's been. <laughs> Tightly guarded. <laughs> it has been a war. Yes, it has. This ha second half has really been a war. Second free throw by Duncan. Is up, and it is good. Duncan with 17 points. Mod with a basketball. Down by 12, 525 left to play. 
Flynn to the right-hand side. Dribbles down to the baseline. Almost lost the handle. Gives to Cole. 18-footer on the way. Well off the mark. Youngblood looked at another Mott player, Flint. Both of them trying to decide who is going to get the rebound, and the ball falls out of play. Yeah, Cuyahoga will get it back. On the inbound to Urbanski. Urbanski all alone on the drive. Up the floor. He stops. Tries to give it now off to the left-hand side. Harris back up top. It comes to Duncan. Duncan is going to dribble to the right hand. Five minutes left to go in the championship. Duncan stops, looks, feeds up top to Urbanski. Back to Duncan on the right-hand side. Duncan has the ball knocked out of his hand by Sadler. Duncan will pick it up. Shot clock at 10. Duncan goes to the left-hand side. Dribbles back to the right-hand side with five, with four on the shot clock. Duncan on the baseline. And a five count is going to be whistled against the challengers of Cuyahoga. Good call by the official. He had him guarded all the way around, even though he broke toward the basket. He never made his move. In the backcourt, Flint is going to walk it across the midcourt strike to the top of the key. Now rolls down left-hand side. Looks to the right and feeds in the middle of the floor to Brown. Brown pulls up, shoots the three, well off the mark in the rebound by Harris. Harris is going to be tied up by Flint, and the possession arrow belongs to the Bears. Boy, if you are a Mott fan, Fowler, you've got to be asking yourself, where was this intensity in the first half? Absolutely. Inbound, comes to Sadler, he stops, he fakes, he shoots, he misses, but he's fouled. He had a point blank layup, but he got leveled. The foul is going to be on Harris, and that is his fourth. The thing that gets me, Scott, they haven't called any hand-checking at all. I mean, if <laughs> you're talking about blood. It's like he has any blood left the way they've been grabbing him. Unbelievable. Well, free throws can be important here. First one by Sadler is good. That's his third point of the ball game. English with one, Flint with two, Crawford with four, Allen with 17, Youngblood with 19, Britton with three, and Cole with two. The challengers have 17 from Duncan, 13 from Smith, 12 from Harris, 10 from Robinson, 8 from Urbanski, and 2 from Tucker. Second one on the way. No good off the front of the rim and the rebound. Loose on the floor. Coming out of the pile with it is going to be Mott. Allen from 3, and he missed it. Rebound scooped up by Brown. Put back is good. Brown with his first two points of the ball game. 62-53, it is a single-digit deficit for Mott. Urbanski in the backcourt, lost the handle on the ball, and the Bears are going to get it back. Ten turnovers in the second half for Cuyahoga. 4-10, left to play. Cole with the ball. On the drive in the paint, he throws it up, he missed it, he's fouled. He'll go to the line. Now look at that, Fowler Canell. A nice little photo of us. How about that? Courtesy of the great folks Man. who are taking pictures here at the national tournament. Is that most wanted list? <laughs> That's a motley crew right there, Fowler. <laughs> at the line, young blood. His first one is no good. Boy, if you're a mott, you got to make free throws. And the second free throw is up and it is good yeah this is a war like you mentioned the second half has just been a complete war the full court press and it seemed like they got seven guys out guarding five flint's going to be called for the foul that is going to be his third yeah. it is the team's sixth so from here on out they'll be in the bonus 405 left to play in this championship contest 62 54 cuyahoga with the lead in the leather. They go to Smith on the left-hand side. Urbanski up top, dribbles, looking for an opening, goes into the lane, and a foul from behind, and that'll send Urbanski to the line. <laughs> the foul is on Sadler. That's his third. What's Urbanski weigh, 150 pounds maybe? A lot less now. <laughs> he has sweated off a few this week. Well, if he can make a couple free throws, he'll be their fifth man in yes, double will. figures. First one on the way. And he's got his ninth point. Checking in now will be Britton. Britton will come in and place a saddler. Second free throw on the way. This one is up, and it is good. And once again, five players in double figures for Cuyahoga. 
They lead by 10, 64-54. 3.50 to go in the championship. Flynn off to the left-hand side, brings it in the middle. Brown gets a player up into the air and now hands off to Flynn. Flynn, heavily guarded by Ginger up top, gives it to Allen. Allen trying to open up for a three, he can't get it, gives to Youngblood. Youngblood out beyond the perimeter. He wants to take it into the paint, pulls up, shoots, and scores! Boy, he got through an opening. I don't know how he did, but he did. Youngblood with 22. In the backcourt, Cuyahoga works it in the middle of the floor. Robinson to Jindra. Jindra off to the right-hand side. Double team gives to Duncan. Duncan up top is going to be guarded by Allen. Duncan to the left. Now forced out back near the midcourt strike. Rolls to the right-hand side. Brought back up near the center court circle. Picked up. They lob down low. Robinson lost the ball on the floor. Nobody has been able to come up with a pigskin yet. Finally, teams touch, and the possession arrow belongs to Cuyahoga. <laughs> like a greased pig in there. Nobody could pick up the ball. It was amazing. Everybody had a chance to grab it but us. My goodness. <laughs> Surprised Richard Donahue wasn't in on the pile down there. Off the inbound, they try the alley-oop. Stolen away by Allen. Allen is going to bring it up the floor for Mott across the midcourt stripe. Into the paint. They kick to the right-hand side. Brown from three. Good! Brown with five, and it's a 64-59 lead by Cuyahoga. Up to the left-hand side. A foul is going to be called on Corey Brown. That is going to be his third. Boy, we're down to that stage, Scott, where you get the small lead. Rebounds and free throws are going to determine this thing. All right, after... Mott was down 40-19 at the half. They've cut it to five with some aggressive, very aggressive play. And the first free throw is no good, but a lane violation by Corey Brown. Wow. And Urbanski's going to get another opportunity at the front end of the one and one. Wow. Second free throw. On the way for Urbanski. It is up and it is good. He's got 11 and now Urbanski's got one more. That the front end of the one and one. The first was no good, but a lane violation gave him a second first chance. This one is up. The second no good and the rebound by Mott. 65-59. The Bears with the ball. They trail. Flint across the midcourt strike. Gets a pick by Youngblood. Rolls to the right-hand side. Dishes to Brown. Brown is going to drive. Stops. Youngblood with the ball. Looking around. He's open. He'll take it. It is no good. Rebound. Picked up by Cuyahoga underneath. Big board that time by Duncan. And Duncan will push up the floor. Across the midcourt stripe to the left-hand side. Urbanski to the right side. Jindra upstairs. Duncan nearing the two-minute warning of the game. Duncan will drive into the lane. Bounce pass down low. Layup good by Lamaro Smith. He's got 15. Big basket. Big basket. 67-59. Flint with the ball. Mott trails out to the right-hand side. He dribbles upstairs and gives to Brown. Brown will shoot the three. Good! Oh, Mackerel. Just like the other day, he hit the threes when they needed him. 144 left to go in the game. Cuyahoga clinging to a 5-point, 67-62 lead. You're enjoying the NJCAA Division II Men's Basketball National Tournament Radio Network.
67-62, Cuyahoga with the lead. 144 left to go in this national championship contest. And the challengers have the basketball. Duncan will inbound in the corner. Robinson up the floor. Urbanski. Urbanski's got a three-on-two break. Urbanski is going to slow it down once he gets into the forecourt. Up top of the key. Near the midcourt circle. Now he'll hand it off to Duncan. Duncan rolls to the right-hand side. He's going to be cut off by Youngblood. Out beyond the arc. And we've got a hand check on Youngblood. Nine fouls against the Bears here in this second half. 121 left to go in this championship game. Cuyahoga at the line with a five-point lead. Mott with one timeout left. Cuyahoga with three. The free throw is good. Duncan with 18 points. Six-point Cuyahoga lead. The second free throw on the way by Duncan is up, and it is good. He'll be in the double bonus the rest of the way, Scott. Mott, down by seven, brings the ball across the midcourt stripe. Flint, Flint, picked by Urbanski, and a foul is going to be called. No harm because they're not in the bonus yet. That is his second and the team's fourth. So they could foul for a long time, Fowler. They only got one more before they get in the bonus. Three possession lead for Cuyahoga. Mott on the inbound. They go deep in the corner. Allen will shoot the three. Missed it off the side of the rim. The rebound scooped up by Harris. Harris in the backcourt, having some trouble. Gets rid of it into the forecourt, Duncan. Duncan is gonna be fouled and that's intentional. Yeah, that might do it, Scott. That might do it. Andre Britton just picked up his fourth personal foul, but what's critical about this one is that it's an intentional two free throws for Cuyahoga and they'll get the ball out of bounds. At the free throw line, Duncan trying to add to his 19 points. Cuyahoga, 66 seconds away, Fowler, from their first Division II National Championship. And the first one is good. Well, he is deliberate on his free throws, which is unusual to see a fellow that deliberate, that accurate. Usually when you stare at that too much, you miss, but he's been very, very good in the clutch. The second one is Short no on that good. One. But they get the ball out of bounds, an eight-point lead with 66 seconds. Cuyahoga being measured for those glass slippers, Fowler, to complete the Cinderella story. Off to the left-hand side. Duncan has it stolen away. Up the floor, Youngblood has the ball. Bounced it off of the leg of a Cuyahoga challenger. And the Bears are going to get it back. <laughs> Amazing game, isn't it? Out to the right-hand side. Flint with the ball. Off the inbound, they give it to Allen. Allen beyond the arc. Gives to Youngblood. Youngblood's going to take it into the lane. Drops it down low. Layup. Cole. Good. He's got his fourth point of the game. 70-64. The lead by Cuyahoga. And a foul is going to be called. That foul is going to be on Allen. It is his second. He just grabbed it with both hands. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I not going to get on a soapbox oh, and no. argue it, but I wonder the difference between that foul and the one down here that was intentional. That, that little touchy one? Yeah, right. But that actually worked out in right. Mott's best interest. They were able to steal the inbound and work it up the floor. I don't know if this is his first time at the line. Robinson does not have a free throw point yet. No, it is not his first. Okay, but he had not two a, other attempts and missed those as well. He's not a very good free throw. You can tell by his action. He doesn't get it. You're the one that doesn't get the arch. He's 0 for 3 from the line. Next one on the way. It is good. Oh, it was a line drive, but it went in. Got it when he needed it. 11 points for him. 71-64. Cuyahoga with the lead. The championship game clock is in the red. Under a minute to play. They work it in the middle of the floor. Brown will shoot the three. It is in and out, no good. Rebound, Youngblood, put back, no good. Tip by Flynn is good. Flynn with his fourth point of the game. And Mott wants a timeout. 
down by five with 41 seconds to play. You're enjoying the NJCAA Division II Men's Basketball National Tournament Radio Network. Forty-one seconds left to go in this championship game. Cuyahoga with a five-point lead, 71-66. They'll run the floor with the basketball. Duncan on the inbound to Urbanski. Urbanski double-teamed in the backcourt, and they get a timeout. Cuyahoga wants a full. We'll take it as well. 38 to play. The challengers up by five. Cuyahoga set to inbound the basketball. 37 seconds to go in this championship game. They lead by five. Urbanski with the ball, double teamed, and we've got a foul. That foul is going to be on Jarrell Allen. It'll be his third. And we'll walk down to the other end of the floor and shoot freebies. Well, that's certainly not the one that they want to foul, Fowler, but at this point, they have no chance. That's true. Big thing that Cuyahoga had to get the ball inbounds. That's a big thing when team's trying to cut you off. You've got to get the ball inbounds first. Urbanski at the line. It is good. Urbanski with 12. Tucker with 2. Duncan with 20. Smith with 15. Harris with 12. And Robinson 11. The second one is good. Mott with the ball. 73-66. Cuyahoga with the lead. 33 seconds to go. Flint on the drive, kicks it out. Youngblood layup is no good, but he's fouled, and he'll go to the line. That foul is on Duncan. His first, the team spit. Youngblood almost got that to go in, Yes, Fowler. he did. He certainly did. Youngblood at the line. The free throw is oh, no good. Oh, that's a killer. Second free throw now on the way by Youngblood. His team down by seven. Make that six. 23 points for him. On the inbound, Robinson's going to be fouled, and we'll walk that's, down and shoot freebies. That's, uh, that they got somehow somebody, some genius in the basketball world has got to figure out a way to change the rules. You cannot run any clock. It's just impossible to run clock. 27 seconds to go. 73-67, the lead by Cuyahoga. Seemed like you said that seven minutes ago. Robinson's free throw, no good. I'm not sure if I'm Mark Anderson. I let him get the inbound That's pass. That's right. I'd get it to the little man. Second free throw. 
No good, and the rebound by Mott. Cole will give it to Flint. Flint up the floor to the right-hand side. Stops, feeds in the corner. Allen from three, off the mark, and it won't go. Rebound underneath and a foul on Robinson. <laughs> we'll walk down and shoot again. They've still got a foul to give. I, I don't understand why they don't use it. Make them put the ball in play again. Yeah, you know they're shooting threes, Fowler. Well, they are in it now, apparently. There was a foul that we missed somewhere. Robinson at the line, trying to make it a three-possession lead. The free throw is no good. Oh, man, that's crazy. If you're a coach, you must, oh, man, it must. your heart must be beating a million he miles an hour. He is one for seven from the line. Next one on the way. It's good. 12 points for Robinson. Mott with the ball, down by seven. 16 seconds to go in the championship. Cole on the baseline, gives to Youngblood. He'll shoot the three. It is no good off the front of the rim. The rebound by Cole. Flint with the three. It is no good. The tip no good. Cuyahoga's going to win it. Cuyahoga is your national champions. The challengers of Cuyahoga Community College have won their first Division II NJCAA National Championship. The Cinderella story is complete. The glass slippers are on their feet, and the challengers have their first national champions. The celebration on the floor, a 74-67 National championship win for Cuyahoga, upending the national champions, finishing the year with a record of 24 and 10, and taking home the top carrot. Fowler, this team came out of the locker room from the get go, absolutely fired up. A stunning first half to take a 21 point lead at one point in the game. They had a 19 point lead at halftime and they walk away with a 74-67 seven point victory. We'll have the coaches interviews coming up in just a moment. Meanwhile, Michael Holvey is getting set to step to the mic with our presentations. Thank you. 